Let's make a simple embed pagination similar to something like this. Here I have four different embeds that we can scroll through by using the buttons below. For example, I can click on next, it'll go to page two. And if I go to the end of all the pages, the next button is grayed out. So my main index file is fairly simple. Here I'm simply importing my JavaScript or TypeScript imports as specified here. And the intents we need for this video are going to be the guilds intent, as well as guild underscore messages. I'm going to be using the worn off keys command command handler, but if you have a different command handler, feel free to use that instead. I now have a page.ts file within my commands folder, and this is where my command is going to actually live. If you're using JavaScript instead of TypeScript, then of course your index and your page.ts files should be using the .js extension. But I'm using TypeScript here, so I'm using .ts. Now, if you're using JavaScript, there's no imports that you need, but within TypeScript, we do have to import all the types we're planning on using throughout this file. Next, we need to define our embeds array and our pages object. To do this in JavaScript, you simply just have to type out this code right here. But within TypeScript, we have to specify what type of values these arrays and objects are going to hold. So for example, here I'm specifying this will be an array of message embeds. And here I'm specifying what type of data will be stored inside of the pages object. Now this next part won't matter if you're using TypeScript or JavaScript, we're simply just going to create four different dummy embeds. And of course, in your actual bot, after watching this tutorial, you can use real embeds here. I'm simply going to loop through four times and add in different embeds that have a simple description, just specifying which page it is. And this will create our array of embeds as we defined right here. I'm now going to create this very simple function called get row. This takes in a string as an ID. And if you're using JavaScript, you do not have to include the colon string part right here. You can just simply add an ID as a normal function parameter. Everything else should be the same though. What we're doing in here is essentially creating a message action row and then adding two simple buttons to it. The first one was going to be a previous embed button. The second one is going to be a next embed button. These are the buttons that we saw in the start of the video. So the custom IDs can be set to anything you want. I simply just have previous embed and next embed. The style as secondary is my personal choice. You can use whichever style you want. And of course, the emoji is personal choice as well. However, set disabled is specifically this Boolean expression here, where we are comparing pages index of ID equal to zero and pages index of ID equal to embeds.length minus one. For the back button, this will be true whenever we're currently on the very first item. So therefore we have nothing to go back because we're already at the start. And it's a similar concept to the next item. If we are at the last element in the array, then it's going to gray out this because this Boolean expression will become true. Using the one keys commands handler, we need to export an object that's going to contain additional information about our command. Within JavaScript, that's simply module.exports equals an empty object. And within TypeScript, we're going to use export default and then an empty object. And also within TypeScript, I'm specifying that this is going to be an I command object. That way we have autocomplete and some error checking because we're using TypeScript. Now the next steps are going to be the same for both JavaScript and TypeScript. Here we have to specify a category and a description. Of course, you can add in whatever text you want for these two fields. Afterwards, we're going to specify slash as the string both and test only as true. This will make it so we're going to register both a legacy command and a slash command. So your normal prefixes and forward slashes will still work. Now the test only as true is very important that you set this up correctly whenever you're using one of keys commands. So head over to your index file and set a correct test servers array right here. This is the guild ID for my test server, which we saw at the beginning of the video. So make sure you add in the correct ID right here. That way we create guild based slash commands and not global slash commands, which might take up to an hour to register. I'm now going to create a callback function and this will be an asynchronous function. And this will be ran every single time a user actually runs this command within a discord server. Now we have a number of different things passed in as an object, but I'm going to destructure a few things we want specifically, for example, a user, a message, an interaction and the channel. Now I'm not using member here and I'm specifically using user that way this can be used within direct messages as well. And we're also importing both message and interaction because this could be a legacy command with a normal prefix such as exclamation point, or it could be a slash command. So we have access to either one because we are specifying slash as both. Now the first step we want to do is to get the ID from the user. 
and also make sure that the user has a pages ID. At the start, we're just going to set this to zero. This line essentially says that the current page for this user equals the current page for this user or zero if one is not set. Essentially not doing anything if someone already has a page, but setting the default value to zero. Next, we're going to get the current embed that we should be displaying for this user based off of the current page. And then we're also gonna be creating a reply, which will be either a message or undefined, as well as a button collector. These two variables are created using the let keyword because we will be changing their values here in just a moment. Now for our button collector, we want a filter method as well as a time constraint. We can pass these in when creating our collector so the collector will expire after a certain amount of time. And also we're only going to be listening for certain button clicks from the user who actually ran this command. Whenever this is ran as a legacy command through a normal message, then the message object passed in right here will exist. But if it's ran as a slash command, then this message object will be null. It's the same concept for this interaction right here. With legacy commands, interaction is null. And with slash commands, interaction actually exists. So we simply have an if and else statement here to make sure we know if it's a legacy or a slash command. So if it is a legacy command, we're going to gain access to the new reply. And we're going to reply by passing in the embed and passing in the components from the get row method, which we created right up here essentially fetching the two buttons that have a back and forward icon. After that, we're going to do the same concept with our slash command. The only real difference being that we're setting ephemeral to true. That way only the user who ran the command can see the response and not everyone else can see it. We're then going to create a message component collector, passing in our filter and our time. And this will be set to the collector object that we created earlier right here. Now, after these if and else statements, the collecting logic is going to be the same. We're essentially wanting to listen to each time a button is clicked, and then we're going to gain access to a button interaction. The first step is to make sure that the button interaction was actually clicked. And then afterwards, we're going to defer an update. This will essentially make it so we can click on the button and not have to immediately reply. And this also make it so the interaction doesn't say that it failed. I'm then going to add in a simple guard clause to see if the custom ID equals either previous embed or next embed. Essentially, if neither of these two things are true, then we want to return. Therefore, meaning that everything after this if statement is a button that was clicked within this actual functionality. This way, we're not executing any code or functionality based off of other button clicks. Now I want to see if the user clicked on the previous embed button and if we're currently on the second page or higher because if we're on the very first page, we don't want to decrease the pages, even though the button should be disabled because of the logic we added in right up here. But adding in this simple extra check, will make sure that if we change anything with the disabling or enabling of the button, that the entire thing won't break. And in a similar concept, we're gonna check for the next embed and check to make sure that we're on the last page. And if not, then we're going to simply increase the page number for this user. Now I want to see if the reply exists or if this was ran as a slash command. The reason for this is we want to now update the reply message, or we want to update the slash command reply to show the new embed and update the buttons. So for example, here we're going to see if reply exists, and if so, we can edit it, passing in a new array of embeds, and this will have the updated page number because we either subtracted the page number here or increased the page number right here. And of course, we're passing in our components array, basically the buttons, which will get the pages from the ID passed in. So that way it'll update for the enabled or disabled state correctly. And of course, basically the same exact concept when it comes to the interaction itself. And this is everything we need to do. My bot right here is running. I'm now back in Discord and I can do exclamation point page, which is the command I created. And here we see that the previous button is disabled because we're currently on page one but I can keep clicking and it's going to increase the pages all the way to page four, which is the final embed. So therefore we do not have a next button anymore. And of course I can do forward slash page with a slash command and the same exact concept will occur. It even remembers our page from the previous usage. So this is a very simple example of how to use embed pagination. Want to improve your Discord bot even further? Click here to check out my other Discord tutorials.